Hello, Michael with X-Force PC here. I want to talk to you today about our new G1000 cockpit. So in the past, we've offered the Real Sim Gear G1000, and we've offered that in a desktop scenario. And we've had many people in the past say, well, I want to use that with the Valair cockpit. Well, in the past, we've had to say it just doesn't work because all of the panels to hold it come up too high and obstruct the monitor. And if you tried to use the desktop stands for the G1000, well, then the uh, yoke kind of got in the way and really wasn't anywhere to set the G1000 down. But now, Volaire has come out with their G1000 panel. And that allows you to connect or install the Real Sim Gear G1000 suite, as well as we've got a Honeycomb Alpha and Bravo here. That's the Alpha Yoke and the Bravo Throttle. And you're allowed, and that allows you to attach that to the Valera cockpit and integrates quite nicely. And then, of course, your monitor you know, lines up well. And then over here, they also have a mount for uh, attaching various um, arms and whatnot. Right now, I've got my iPad over here just showing something called XMapper, which is a free um, mapping software that's uh, for the iPad. Now, um, this I think is one of the best, if that I know of at least, non-BATD systems for learning the G1000 and staying current. Um, you may say BATD, what is that? Well, that stands for Basic Aviation Training Device, which is a term used by the FAA. And a basic aviation training device can be used for official type training. And that means the FAA has looked at the whole hardware and said, you know what, all this combination of hardware and software together, we're willing to say this is good for flight training. And what that specifically means is you can count two and a half hours of your uh, regular pilot's license training uh, on the sim. Uh, you can count two and a half hours of that uh, of your flight time. Now, as far as... Uh, instrument rating, getting your IFR or instrument um, rating, you can do up to 10 hours of that work on the simulator. And by the way, I should mention for the uh, pilot's license, you do have to be with a certified instructor, of course. And then lastly, you can use the system for instrument currency. So those are the ways that uh, on paper, the BATD has its advantages. Now, Another thing, and again, this is not a BATD, but another way that a BATD has an advantage is that I think this is the reason why I think most people buy a BATD is because it's been blessed by the FAA. The FAA has come in and said, this we certify is good for training, and they like that peace of mind. Now, the negative of the BATD is cost, unfortunately. For a BATD, you're looking at 15 to thirty thousand um, dollars in that you know sort of range the ones we recommend you look at are from real sim gear we like those a lot um, you know real sim gear makes the g1000 suite but they also make their own set of batds now uh, this is coming in under ten thousand but again it's not a batd um, but i will say that it does the things that those batds do um, it's just not officially blessed by the FAA. So, um, you know, if you're spending several hundred thousand dollars on a plane, it's probably not a big deal to spend another 20 or so on a BATD system. But just know that that's one option. This is yet another option, a non-BATD. So that gets that out of the way. Let's talk a little bit more specifically about what we've got here. Now, taking it from the top, we've got a 49-inch super ultra-wide monitor. The great advantage of that is it gives you a wide field of view without killing your frame rate. When you add multiple monitors across here, every monitor you add chops off about a third of your frame rate. So you're, you might be at 90 frames per second on one. And by the time you add two more, you're down to 30 or fewer frames per second. So that's what I really like about the, uh, the 49 ultra-wide. And also sort of fits nicely with the panel itself. Now coming on down, we have the Valair Sim uh, avionics panel. 
And again, it integrates well with the G1000 suite. We've got our Alpha and our Bravo, as I mentioned earlier, which are really great mid-range yoke and throttle. So um, these are not the cheapest and they're not the most expensive, but they're one of, they fit right in that best for the money area. Um, I wouldn't put them in the best, but best, definitely best for the money. Of course, the Valer cockpit has this tray that the um, avionics panel and the uh, Alpha and the Bravo are sitting on. And then coming on down, you know, I'm sitting in the seat that it comes with, which integrates in. The seat does go uh, forward and back somewhere down here. Here we go. Yep. See, it goes forward and back, which is nice. I tend to keep it most of the way back. There's a place for your pedals. And a, we just have a set of Logitech pedals down here. Those are very basic you can use pretty much any pedals you want. We've tested the cockpit with the um, the ones from Virtual Fly, the Ruddos, which are like $1,000 uh, rudder pedals. And you could use those if you wanted. And I believe the Thrustmaster ones work as well, but I, I have not personally tested that. Now over here we do, and by the way, there's a keyboard tray. The keyboard tray typically is over on the right side. I believe Valaire sells a kit on their website. If you want to move that tray over to the left side, um, again, that's an add-on kit. And a lot of people, I think, will want to do that because it keeps it out of the way of the throttle over here. They also sell some armrests. If you wanted armrests, you could just buy those directly from them. And uh, also over here, there's a mount um, behind my iPad which is for um, like a ball. And then once you mount that ball on there, then you can attach arms and mounts and all kinds of things. So you can attach all sorts of things over here. This does not come with it, but what we'll do is we'll provide you with a list of various arms and mounts and so forth that you can buy on Amazon and attach over here to, you know, you want to put your iPad, your Android tablet, your phone, you know, uh, you want to attach a clipboard, you know, whatever you want to have. And of course, over here on your iPad, I'm running this basic mapping software, but you could be running ForeFlight. You could run Air Manager if you wanted to put some steam gauges on here. You know, a lot of these planes will have backup steam gauges. So if you wanted to put those on here, you could run Air Manager. You could run Xavion. Again, this is X Mapper. There's all kinds of, there. you could run... Um, uh, control pad. There's all sorts of apps you can run on an iPad and you can have that. There's a nice space for it right over here. So next let's talk about the planes. And I'm, I'm really going to try to do this apparently all in one take. We're going to talk about the planes that you can use with um, this system. We're running currently the, um, this is the Cessna 172 and we're showing the cockpit, but if you didn't want to see the cockpit, you could uh, switch to the view that just has scenery only. Um, but if you want a more realistic view, you know, can show the cockpit. You can also raise yourself up a little bit like I like to do so I can see a little better and I don't need to see the G1000s down here. And then, um, you know, anything we do on here happens on the sim. You can see it changing on the sim. So this is just basically a copy of what's happening in the cockpit. And I'm not a G1000 guy, so I can't sit here and rattle through all the functions, but uh, the, the G1000 that comes with X-Plane does 90 plus percent of what an actual G1000 does. I think there are a few little functions here and there that it doesn't do, but they're always improving it and, and adding additional functionality. But again, 90 plus percent of what a G1000 does, this one will do. So this is the uh, Cessna 172. Um, Maybe I'll uh, try to do a takeoff. I'm no great pilot, so uh, yeah, bear with that. I'm going to hit myself with some flaps over here. We have a dedicated flaps lever. We have a landing gear lever, which we won't be needing in a 172. We have our pitch trim here, which is nice to have, and I'm all over the runway trying to talk and fly at the same time, so try to ignore that. Um, then we have a, a bunch of switches down here for various functions. Um, kind of your standard switch panel built into the uh, alpha yoke, which is nice. We've got a hat switch here, so if we wanted to look around while we're flying, you know, we can do that. And I'm just using my, my uh, hat switch on the yoke, and I'm just flying all over the place. And let's say this thing's a little nose up, so I'm going to hit a little pitch trim down here. 
so we're not quite so nose happy. There's additional functionality on this, um, this throttle that has to do with the autopilot, which I'm not well versed in. But uh, there, there is that. And of course, you have, um, you have two levers for throttle. So if you're doing a twin engine plane, um, you could you know, control both engines. And then, of course, um, prop and mixture as well. Um, and of course, this plane doesn't have a prop function. It just has mixture. So this should, yeah, that controls the mixture right there. If we want to retard the mixture. Now let's take a look at uh, a couple of other planes. These come with X-Plane. So we have the Lance Air Evolution that also supports, uh, you know, has a G1000 built in. And by the way, you can fly any of the planes that come with X-Plane with this, any of them. Um, you know, if they, if they don't come with a G1000, though, these just won't do anything. But you can fly any plane that you want. Um, but I'm just showing you the ones that come with the G1000. You can see, hit the button here and things change up there. And then the other plane that comes with X-Plane that will work is uh, the Cirrus SR-22. That also has the G-1000. And so there's the SR-22. And again, you know, see the thing changing there as I turn this knob. Okay, well, I forgot one plane, so I'm sort of splicing this uh, this clip into the middle of the video here because I forgot about the Cirrus Vision Jet, which also supports the G1000 and comes with X-Plane. So I should have covered that earlier um, with the other one. So that makes four planes that come with X-Plane that have the G1000 work and work well with this system. Uh, again, there are some others that you can buy, and uh, also you can fly any plane. So there are the uh, planes that you can use. Now, there are some additional planes you can use. Um, off the top of my head, there's a TBM 900 sold at X Aviation. There's a Diamond DA40 also sold at X Aviation. There, um, gosh, there's another one. Um, what am I forgetting? Well, I think there's enough. There's also some additional like free planes and such. What we do is we try to list them uh, on the product page. So if you you know scroll through the product page, you should see where we've listed uh, the the ones we know of that are compatible. Uh, technically, any plane that uses the included X plane G1000 with it uh, is compatible. And uh, anything that doesn't, you'll want to check with us or Real Sim Gear just to be sure. So there is an overview of the uh, G1000 cockpit from X-Force PC.